What's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's Kevin Forte. Today we're going to continue our season preview videos. We're looking in the Pacific Division today at the Seattle Kraken as we continue to go through all 32 NHL teams. So the Seattle Kraken have had a lot of changes to their lineup since last season. Um, really the two notable ones being in free agency. So we're going to go over that. We're going to go over some guys that have been in the system that are going to expect to see a little bit more of a prominent role than last season or even jumping into the lineup. So we're going to go over all of that today. So in between the pipes, we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to start off in between the pipes today. Uh, so Philip Grubauer and Joey Decord, uh, that was the tandem from last season. That's going to stay intact. So no changes on the blue or no changes in between the pipes. Defense and forwards is a little bit of a different story. So most of these players were on the team last year. So the Kraken weren't one of the teams that really half their roster has changed, like we just talked about in San Jose. Um, not that much change, but enough where we need to mention it. So for the top line, it's Jared McCann, Matty Beneers, and Jordan Everly. So that's going to stay intact from last year. I think that's a good line. I think that's the reason the Kraken will probably head into the season with that group as their first pair. Uh, that, that top line of Jared McCann, really, he played well last year. Matt Beneers came onto the scene, really showed what he can do at the NHL level. And obviously, Everly, a veteran, you know what you're getting from him. Um, he's a good hockey player alongside all these other guys. They seem to fit and complement each other well on that top line. The second line, uh, Burakovsky and Schwartz, but there is a new center there. As Chandler Stevenson comes in from the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, that was a big move at the time because Vegas, really, he was one of their best centers throughout his tenure in Las Vegas. So for Stevenson, a lot of people are saying, listen, he's an overpaid player. I see him using that as a barometer to say, I'm still underrated across the league um, because a lot of people have always said he's underrated and this and that. Well, now he's getting paid like he probably should be, but people still think now, well, now he's just an overpaid player you know, underperforming player. And that's just not the case. I think Chandler Stevenson is really that good. And uh, hopefully he proves me right this year because I think he's really, he's in a good situation in Seattle. There are guys that can score in this lineup. I think it's a good spot for him. Uh, the third line, you got Tolvanen, Gord, and Bjorkstrand. Solid enough. Um, I'd like to see maybe a little bit more scoring consistency from that line. And I think a lot of people felt that way, you know, Tolvin and Gord, they're good hockey players, but they've had stretches where you're like, oh, you want a little bit, you know, they'll score a couple goals in a given game and then they'll be quiet for a couple weeks. So I expect that to get a little bit improved. The fourth line's interesting. We've got Brandon Tanev, Shane Wright, and Ty Kartai. So Wright and Kartai have been a big part of the Coachella Valley Firebirds and their recent success uh, at the American Hockey League level recently. So those two guys now come up from the AHL, graduating to the NHL. So we'll see how Wright and Kartai uh, kind of do with the big club for a long period of time. Now the, th now the defense, um, it's pretty much the same defense. Uh, so it's Vince Dunn and Larson as your top pair. So basically no change there. Jamie Alexiak alongside Brandon Montour. That's your second pair. I think Brandon Montour, obviously with the pedigree of winning a Stanley Cup, most recently now with the Florida Panthers this summer. Uh, that's a really big thing here. So I think that they're looking for that leadership and that sort of that experience of winning. And that's the theme with Stevenson as well when you really think about it. You know, Stevenson won the Cup with the Vegas Golden Knights a couple years back. I believe Stevenson was with the Capitals in 18 when he won with the Washington Capitals. And like I said, Brandon Montour. So there's a lot going on here. Um, and I think that guys like Montour and Stevenson, even though a lot of people might say they're overrated, those are additions that are really going to help them out. Uh, Riker Evans and Will Borgen is your fourth or your, th your fourth line, your third pair. Honestly, I'd like to see that improve. I think if the Kraken really want to solidify themselves as a legit playoff contender, I think they need a little bit more help on the blue line. But we're going to see. We're going to see what Riker Evans can do. Uh, Will Borgen, you kind of know what you're getting from him already. So it's going to be interesting to see how those guys develop. And Riker Evans is an interesting one to watch because Ron Francis is the GM of the Seattle Kraken. We know how good he is at developing, drafting uh, young defensemen into top four potential. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there with Riker Evans. Uh, like I said, the, the really only 
key changes are Evans coming in and then Stevenson and Montour. The perception for a lot of fan bases is still that, you know, that, that year that they beat the Colorado Avalanche, they overachieved. And I think the fact they missed the playoffs in 2024 and going into this year, it kind of feels like that, yeah, they made some good moves and they're probably going to have more points than they did last year. But it's not going to be easy because especially in the Pacific right now, we've seen Vancouver and Edmonton just completely turn it on. Well, who's really that third team? Because last year it was the Los Angeles Kings, but does it end up being a team like the Seattle Kraken? Or does it be end up being a team like the Anaheim Ducks? Or, you know, is it the Kings again? So I think when you look at the Pacific Division as a whole, the question for the Kraken and those other middle-tier teams is, are we that third team? Because then at least you know you're not worrying about wild card positioning, where in the Central, you've got a lot of teams like Winnipeg, Minnesota, St. Louis that are going to be right in that mix of playoffs and non-playoffs. I think for, for the Pacific Division, they're going to really focus on locking down that third spot in the Pacific so they don't even have to worry about wild card positioning. But I'd love to know what you guys think, and I think the reality is for the Kraken, and where's my phone? Of course, I don't have it with me. Um, but yeah, I, I think I put my predictions. I don't remember the exact number I put, but I have them missing the playoffs. It's really close, though. I think I had them with like 86 points or something like that, so it's not like they were out to lunch and, you know, trade deadline, they're selling everybody off and this and that. I don't think that's going to be the case. And to be honest with you, the Kraken don't really have the type of team right now where they're going to be selling off a ton of pieces. Um, I just, the way they're structured right now, um, they want to continue to build on what they already have, right? And that's what they did this year with Stevenson and Montour, but it's still not cup pedigree. And I would even, you know, I, I think there's a lot of argument to be made whether this team is even a playoff team right now. And the way that, you know, Grubauer and Decord play last year really didn't help the cause. They need better goaltending. Um, and they need to stay healthy because that was another big thing. You know, they weren't able to stay healthy last season and, and that really hurt their, their chances. I think, you know, they're a little bit, um, what's the word? They're a little bit sheltered in that Pacific division because, you know, the Los Angeles Kings haven't been what we hoped they would become. The Sharks and the Ducks have been rebuilding. So it's allowed a team like Seattle to maybe be more than they really were those first couple years when they were in the NHL. And it's not a knock on the, the Kraken necessarily. I just think that we're starting to see, like, if they were playing in the Metro or the Atlantic, like, this team would definitely struggle a lot more if they were in that type of division at this moment. So hopefully they're able to get things going because we know, like I said, the Sharks are going to get better. You know, they're not going to be 50 point, 59 points next year. The Ducks, I think, are going to be better. And hopefully the Seattle Kraken are able to rise with the tide here. And I think they will be able to do that. But like I said, a lot of it, a lot of it rides on health. And a lot of it, a lot, a lot of it is going to rely on Grubauer getting back to the form we saw before last season. So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel as always. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.